Dear friends, a very good day to all of you and welcome to this video lecture on principles of engineering system design. This is the first uh, lecture on this uh, series of lectures for, uh, on system design and in this uh, lecture I will introduce the topic and uh, discuss about what are the contents we are going to discuss in this lecture. System design or engineering system design may be a, a totally new topic to some of you or to some of you, you may be wondering what is system engineering and what are the topics we are going to cover in this lecture. And most of you might have used the system or heard about uh, system engineering in various contexts. We talk about uh, various systems, we talk about uh, democratic system, we talk about education system, we talk about uh, human body as a system and there are many other system, we talk about electoral systems and then we talk about uh, even uh, IAT as a system. So, what actually we mean by uh, system and we uh, discuss these various uh, systems uh, which is around all of us. A system basically is a set of entities when put together gives a desired output. Engineering system is also something similar to that, there are various entities, there are human beings in the system, there are machines, there are materials, there are mechanisms, there are computers, softwares, there are lot of interfaces, hardware there are so many entities in the system and when we put together all these entities and put them in such a way that we get a desired output. So, engineering system is basically a collection of various entities when put together gives you a, a desired output. So, here also in, uh, in this course in engineering system design course, we are trying to see how do we actually identify the entities needed for a particular uh, output, how do we put them together and how do we actually make sure that these entities put together gives us a, a desired system. So, the focus of this course is basically to understand the principles on which the system design is focused or system design is based upon and then how do we actually do a systematic way of designing the engineering systems in order to make sure that it actually produces the desired outputs. Most of you must be uh, knowing about the various engineering systems existing. In this course, we will be focusing on complex engineering systems where actually the magnitude of the number of components, the number of entities or the number of subsystem involved is huge. Therefore, we need to have a very systematic process of designing the system and that is the focus of this course engineering system design. Sometimes engineering system design the refer it as uh, systems engineering and this is very common to other fields also, it is not only to engineering field, we can see that systems engineering is applied in various other social sciences also, we talk about systems engineering and the focus of this course is basically to look at the uh, engineering aspects or the engineering systems and how do we design the engineering system. Let us look at what is uh, system engineering or why do we need systems engineering. As we know that most of these engineering systems are there already and uh, we have many natural systems or man made systems, but then why do we need to have a, a very uh, focused engineering system design approach. If we uh, look at some of the case studies from the history, we can see that there are lot of uh, failures in the engineering systems and this actually led to the development of system engineering as a separate discipline and therefore, we need to have a, a systematic approach for designing systems because a systematic approach will reduce the errors and uh, reduce the failures of the engineering systems and ensure that it actually produces the desired outputs. Look at the picture in this uh, slide, you can see this is an airbag system which uh, most of the automobiles are having, modern automobile vehicles have this kind of airbags as a, a protection device for uh, passengers as well as drivers. But when this, uh, these devices were introduced in early 1990s, this actually the safety device itself became a cause of death for a, a noticeable number of individuals. Though that was not the intention of airbags, the intention of airbags was to protect the people, but uh, because of some design failures or the system failures, this became a cause of death for many individuals because of the malfunctioning of the airbag. If you look at the reasons for it, we can see that there were many flaws in the design, testing and deployment conditions and we said it in the system design. 
So, the, one of the main reasons for the failure was flaws in the design, testing and deployment conditions. So, that actually tells us that it is necessary to find out the actual requirements of the system and once we have the actual requirements of the system identified, we need to ensure that these requirements are actually implemented in the system or the functions needed to meet these requirements are implemented and they are tested and verified fully before we really implement the system for the actual application. So, this was the one of the reasons for the failure of this uh, airbag system. Like this we can see lot of uh, examples, Arian 5 flight 501 failure, again this is a case of uh, system failure. You can see this Arian 5 the launch vehicle developed by European Space Agency was first launched on June 4, 1996 with the 4 satellites on board. At 37 seconds into flight, Arian 5 veered off course and disintegrated shortly thereafter. Again, this is a, a failure from the history, engineering failure of the system. As you know, this is a very complex system, all the uh, launch vehicles are basically a very complex engineering systems. And, uh, Again, this had some flaws in the interfaces, the design interfaces were not proper. So, there were some flaws in the conversion of the data and uh, this actually led to the failure of the engineer, this is particular system. So, a major flaw in the communication interface resulted into this catastrophe. So, again it actually emphasized the importance of having a systematic approach in the design and development of engineering system because there are many uh, subsystems and uh, there are multiple interfaces and if interfaces are not properly designed then that may result into a tragedy like this. This is another example which is very uh, famous and uh, most of you may be uh, aware of it the Columbia disaster. Again the space shuttle Columbia when it was uh, returning back to the uh, earth after its mission uh, disintegrated into uh, pieces and uh, all the astronauts were uh, killed in this particular uh, incident. This actually happened in uh, 2003 February 1, 2003. In fact, uh, okay, these are the crew members who actually died during the uh, return of the space shuttle and as you know uh, one of uh, India's daughters also uh, lost her life in this particular mishap. If you look at the uh, details of this particular uh, incident, we can see that this particular incident happened because uh, there was a small problem and the space shuttle took off. Uh, one of the tiles on its surface developed some cracks and uh, it was a, an issue which actually mission uh, managers they identified in the beginning itself when it uh, took off. They could uh, see that there is a problem with the uh, one of the tiles on the surface. But then uh, it was not possible to uh, bring it back immediately. So, they did lot of analysis, they did modeling analysis and uh, lot of simulations to see what are the consequences of this particular damage. And finally, after a lot of uh, analysis and a uh, lot of studies and then uh, they took a decision that uh, this may not cause a major problem. So, that uh, so that they can continue with the mission and then return the space shuttle back to earth and then do the uh, repair work. So, the here actually it was a, a decision making under uh, uncertain conditions. So, it was not sure I mean the team was not very sure whether the uh, system will perform as per their simulations, but they need to take a decision under lot of other uncertain conditions and they took the decision to continue with the uh, flight and then while coming back while the shuttle was returning back the temperature rose up very high and then it actually resulted into the complete uh, failure of the system the whole uh, space shuttle and all the crew were killed in the accident. So, here you can see that it is not only the engineering aspect, but there are so many other aspects like uh, making a, a particular decision about whether to continue with the system uh, mission or not. So, we need to consider so many other aspects of the system and then see then take a decision under a lot of uncertainties. So, taking a, a decision under a very uncertain conditions also is part of a system engineering. So, here all these uh, incidences basically tells us that uh, engineering a, a complex system is uh, very difficult and there are a lot of uh, issues need to be taken into account when we actually design and develop and deploy, man, deploy an engineering system. To show the uh, level of complexities, you can take this example for the uh, ICBM project which is the intercontinental ballistic missile project ATLAS. The ATLAS had a lot of uh, various steps involved in this development of this uh, particular uh, missile shield system. So, SM-65 was the missile designed by the Air Force Ballistic Missile Division and built by a conveyor division of General Dynamics. 
This was originally designed as an ICBM in the late 1950s and uh, Atlas was the foundation for a family of successful space launch vehicles now built by United Launch Alliance. The Atlas rocket family is today used as a launch platform for commercial and military satellites and other space vehicles. So, this actually got a, a series of uh, launch vehicles. Uh, the present one is uh, it was built around 2002 and 2003, but the development started somewhere in 1950s and then it actually there were various versions of this particular program, a missile. To see the complexity of this uh, development, you can see that there were 18,000 scientists and engineers working in this particular project. There were 17 contractors, there were 200 subcontractors and 200,000 suppliers involved in this particular project. So, you can actually imagine the scale of the project with the 18,000 scientists and 20,000 suppliers and in between lot of contractors and subcontractors working together in order to deliver a particular project. So, the management of the whole uh, the manpower, the subsystems and the interfaces all this becomes too complex for anyone to manage the system. This actually shows the evolution of the Atlas uh, family. You can see that started somewhere in uh, 92 with the uh, first uh, version of this uh, product Atlas 2A and then uh, Atlas 5 is the latest one. It is basically Atlas 5 family consists of uh, these uh, three series and it was the uh, final one was uh, developed in 2002. You can see that uh, as the uh, development progresses there will be a so lot of additions, lot of changes in this uh, system and every time somebody has to closely monitor the variations in the system design and closely record it and then maintain a, a proper strategy for the development also. So, all this makes the system development very complex and requires a very systematic approach in the design development as well as deployment and even the uh, disposal of the system. So, let us see the what are the important points we need to discuss or we need to learn when we design this kind of uh, complex engineering systems. To define the system engineering, basically it is a, a top down life cycle approach to the design, development and deployment of large scale systems, processes or operations to meet the effective needs of users and stakeholders in a cost effective high quality way. So, as you can see it is a top down life cycle approach. So, it is not only the design which is important. So, we need to look at the whole life cycle of the system where we look at the design, the development, the deployment and even the training and maintenance of the system and then uh, how do we actually uh, dispose the whole system. So, it is actually a, a life cycle approach where we need to look at all aspects of the life cycle of the system and then every life cycle need to be analyzed and we need to make proper design for these life cycles. When we design a system we need to even look at how do we actually uh, finally dispose the system is it going to affect the other uh, existing systems or natural systems or we can we use it for some other system or can, can upgrade the system further. So, all these aspects need to be uh, taken into account when we actually go for the design of this type of a complex engineering system. So, system engineering is basically an organized and systematic way of design and then it considers all the factors involved in the design. So, it is not only a particular aspect of the system. So, we need to look at the, all the aspects of the design. So, looking from the uh, customer requirements to the uh, disposal of the system everything need to be designed that is all the factors need to be considered and then it integrates all the disciplines and specialty groups into a team effort. So, here actually you will have multiple disciplines. So, it is not only a particular discipline in engineering there will be multiple specialty groups and this actually tries to integrate them into a, a team effort and it ensures the business and customer needs of all stakeholders and ensures a system that meets the user needs. So, here actually the business needs as well as the customer needs of all stakeholders. There are multiple stakeholders in the system development. So, we need to ensure that we take care of their uh, the stakeholders interest and meet their uh, needs of these stakeholders. So, what are the things what we are going to uh, discuss in this particular uh, lecture? We will see the, uh, the topics to be covered in this uh, particular course. Uh, we have around 30 to 40 lectures on uh, systems engineering or principles of engineering system design. So, the main topics to be uh, covered in these lectures are first basically the introduction to system engineering and then we discuss about the system engineering design process. So, what are the different life cycles in a system and what are the different product development processes uh, we can employ 
and uh, then we go through the uh, six functions of a design process. Basically, uh, we will define the system level design problem, then uh, functional architecture of the system, then physical architecture. Basically, the functional architecture will look at the uh, functions needed in the system in order to satisfy the customer requirements which are identified in the uh, system level design problem. And then we go to the uh, physical architecture where the physical architecture will try to convert the functions into physical building blocks and then we develop the, an operation architecture which actually integrates all the physical architecture. Then we develop the interface architecture basically to look at the subsystems and uh, the interfaces needed for these subsystems and finally we do the integration and qualification. So, that is the uh, last function in the design process whatever we design we to do an integration of the all the subsystems and then ensure that the systems or the subsystems meet the requirement of the stakeholders. So, that is the qualification process where we do the testing and uh, analysis of the whole system and ensure that it actually meets the customer requirements and once we, it is verified then only it will be used for uh, customer application or for the further development of the system. So, these are the six functions of the uh, design process. Uh, our main focus will be on these six functions. We will try to understand uh, how do we actually carry out these functions in the design process across the life cycle and then uh, we go to the other topics such as uh, system failure analysis. So, we look at the uh, failure analysis of the system and then see how do we actually design a system in order to make sure that the possibility of failure is uh, very minimal. We discuss about the decision making under uncertainty where we look at the various options available or various um, techniques available in order to take a decision based on the available information at that time. So, there is a risk involved in the decision making. So, we will see how do we actually reduce the risk involved in the decision making process. And then we will uh, discuss about uh, a few uh, system modeling tools because uh, we have to do a lot of analysis while we design the engineering system. So, we will discuss uh, about a uh, few tools available for uh, modeling of the system. And similarly, we will look at the statistical tools for engineering design, basically the design of experiments and design for reliability etcetera. There are few software uh, tools available for system design. So, I will briefly explain about these tools and how do we use these softwares for uh, effective uh, design of engineering systems. And of course, we will uh, take few case studies and examples to show how to use these tools as well as these methods in the design of system as well as the implementation of the system and then to see how the principles of a systematic process actually helps us to design complex systems and to ensure that it actually meets the customer requirement. So, these are the main topics which will be covered during these lectures maybe 30 to 40 lectures will be there which actually will cover all these topics and few case studies also. Some of the references for this uh, lecture, the textbook is Dennis Butte, The Engineering Design of Systems. Then uh, another book by Alexander Kosaev and William Switch, Systems Engineering Principles and Practice. Then uh, Said Nikko, Creative Design of Products and Systems, Wiley 2009 edition. Apart from this, I will be giving you a few assignments and uh, group projects. The assignments will be uploaded to the web and then you can actually uh, try it yourself. Some of the uh, answers for these assignments also will be given in the web itself. You can actually uh, refer to that and then see whether uh, you are actually um, doing it properly or you are actually understanding the uh, principles and then how to apply these principles for the design of complex systems. There will be few group projects also. Of course, these group projects you can actually if you are in a group or three or four uh, students together, you can work out these uh, projects and then try to see how to implement or how to use the principles in a real life uh, scenario or real case studies. So, that also you can try as part of the course. So, the main course objectives what we actually can uh, see from uh, after at the end of this course, uh, we have some objectives in uh, providing these uh, course materials to you. So, at the end of this course, uh, you should be able to develop a systems engineering plan for a project and uh, judge the applicability of any proposed process, strategy or methodology for systems engineering. So, you should be able to plan a project in terms of systems engineering and then uh, judge the applicability of any proposed process for this uh, particular uh, 
project and apply the most essential systems engineering tools to realistic problems. So, if you have a realistic problem how do we actually apply the most essential systems. So, that also you should be able to uh, understand by the end of this course and then uh, recognize the value and limitations of modeling and simulation. We have we will be discussing about many simulation and modeling uh, techniques. So, you will be uh, able to recognize the value and limitations of these models and formulate an effective plan for gathering and using data and uh, how do we actually gather data and use them in the design and then determine the effects of manufacture, maintenance and disposal on system cost and value. So, you should be able to determine the effects of um, cost on uh, various aspects like manufacture, maintenance and disposal on system. So, there are uh, different various costs involved in this. So, you should be able to understand the impact of this on uh, the system design. So, these are the course objectives. So, what we mentioned uh, so far is the introduction and then um, what are the topics to be covered in this uh, course and what are course objectives. And uh, now, we will go to discuss more about the systems engineering and uh, we will try to define the uh, systems engineering from the design point of view from the or from the uh, engineering perspective we will design what is system, what is engineering and uh, what is system engineering and what are the roles of system engineers in developing this kind of uh, complex systems. So, let us look at what is the definition for engineering because systems engineering is basically a, you can say that there is a, a system and there is engineering. So, we will discuss what is engineering and what is system and then what is this system engineering. There are lot of definitions for engineering, but basically if you look at engineering is a, a process of uh, doing things in an effective way. Even without uh, engineering or without a proper uh, definition for engineering, engineering uh, projects were taking place people were doing it because whenever you try to do something uh, in a cost effective and an efficient manner then we call it as engineering. As Arthur Wellington uh, said once engineering is the art of doing something well with 1 dollar which any bungler can do with 2 dollars. So, basically we are trying to do uh, how do we do it in an efficient way with uh, using the known principles and uh, practices how do we uh, complete a project in a cost effective and an efficient way that is basically the engineering. But there are different uh, definitions. So, as per the accreditation board for engineering and technology, engineering is the process of devising a system component or process to meet desired needs. So, basically it is a process of uh, devising a system component or process to meet the desired needs. It is a decision making process often iterative in which the basic sciences, mathematics and engineering sciences are applied to convert resources optimally to meet a stated objective. So, here an optimal utilization of the resources to meet a stated objective is uh, defined as engineering. Then what is a system? So, we discussed about uh, a system or we briefly mentioned about system basically there are various systems existing in the nature, there are man made systems, artificial systems are there. So, how do we actually define a system? There are various uh, definitions for system. A system is uh, defined as a, a group of interacting interrelated or interdependent elements forming a complex whole. So, that is one of the definitions. The other one is a functionally related group of elements like the human body regarded as a functional physiological unit or an organism as a whole especially with regard to its vital processes or functions. The other definition is a group of physiologically or anatomically complementary organs or parts like the nervous system or the skeletal system. So, these are actually a, a physiologically or anatomically complementary systems. A group of interacting mechanical or electrical components or a network of related computer software, hardware and data transmission devices. So, if you took internet as a system then again it is a network of related computer software, hardware and data transmission devices. So, like this there are uh, multiple definitions, standard definition is basically a system is commonly defined to be a collection of hardware, software, people facilities and procedures organized to accomplish some common objective. So, that is a, a, a common definition for engineering system which is a, a collection of hardware, software, people and uh, other facilities in order to get a, a, a to accomplish a common objective. NASA systems engineering handbook the definition for a system is given as a set of interrelated components which interact with one another in an organized fashion toward a common purpose. So, that was the definition given by the NASA systems engineering handbook for an engineering system. 
and it actually contains many components. So, there can be very diverse components in the engineering system. There can be persons and organizations, there can be software and data, there can be equipment and hardware, facilities and materials and services and techniques. So, you can see they are quite diverse persons and organizations, software, data, equipment or hardware and facilities and materials, services and techniques. So, this can be the any system can have any of these uh, components, some of them may be having all these components or some of them having few of these components, but any system will be having very diverse components in order to meet the requirements. As per the NASA system engineering handbook, system engineering is a robust approach to the design, creation and operation of system. So, it is not only the uh, design uh, activity, it is basically an approach to the design, creation and operation of systems and it consists of identification and quantification of system goals. So, these are the approach for the system design, we need to look into these aspects like uh, the identification on and quantification of system goals, creation of alternative system design concepts, performance of design trades that is uh, there may be many design trade off in the system, because when we design a system we will be looking at the aspects of uh, trade off where we need to reduce the cost sometimes or increase the performance or when you try to increase the performance the cost may go up. So, we need to have some kind of a trade off and that kind of trade studies are also part of the system engineering. So, that, that actually is the design trades. Then we have the selection and implementation of the best design that is the balanced and robust design and then we have verification that the design is actually built and properly integrated in accordance with the specifications. Then assessment of how well the system meets the goals. So, these are the important uh, steps involved in the system engineering or design of uh, engineering systems. So, we look at the uh, system goals, then the design concepts, then trade off, then the verification uh, strategies and then assessment of how well the system performed as per the or to meet the stakeholder needs. These are the things important in the design of systems. So, that is about the system and then uh, we discussed about engineering also, then what is uh, systems engineering? So, we have the system which is a collection of entities which actually provides you a particular output and then in systems engineering, which again we briefly saw this in the earlier uh, slides, system engineering is a top down life cycle approach to the design, development and deployment of large scale systems, processes or operations to meet the effective needs of users and stakeholders in a cost effective high quality way. So, it actually involves an interdisciplinary approach and means to enable the realization of successful systems. So, again uh, there are multiple uh, disciplines involved in this that is why it is a an interdisciplinary approach and uh, means to enable the realization of successful systems. It focuses on defining customer needs and required functionality early in the development cycle, documenting requirements then proceeding with design synthesis and system validation while considering the complete problem that is the most important aspect of uh, system design. It focuses on uh, defining customer needs in a very early stage. So, even before we really start the uh, design process, it look at, looks at the customer uh, requirements at a very early stage and then document these requirements and uh, try to identify the uh, origin of these requirements, look at the grassroot level re requirement and then try to design for the problem and uh, document these requirements in a, a proper way, a systematic way of documenting the requirements and then designing the system to meet these requirements in terms of the functions and the physical architectures and then doing the synthesis to see whether we can improve the uh, system design, how, how do we optimize the system design, how do we actually have a, a proper trade off in the design and then finally, verifying the system to see whether it actually meets the customer requirement and that, that every time we will be actually having the whole system as a focus and every stage will be focusing on that particular aspect and uh, keeping the, the whole system as a uh, in the focus. So, that uh, we ensure that when, once we have the whole system designed or when we have this system designed, it actually meets the uh, intended goals of the stakeholders. So, that is the main focus in the engineering system design. So, here we actually consider the complete problem as a in the initial stage itself and then start uh, designing from the fundamental from the basic customer requirement and then proceed with the system synthesis and design synthesis and then deliver the product to meet the customer requirement. That is basically the systems engineering. So, we have engineered the, the system to meet the customer requirement and for that we need to have follow a particular 
procedure or we need to have a systematic procedure and this procedure basically which actually ensures that the, the system delivers the required uh, functionalities that is the systems engineering approach. You can see how this uh, actually system engineering basically adds value into the enterprises. You know that the profitability of an engineering firm or a, a enterprise actually depends on two things. One is the system effectiveness, how effective the system is delivering the output and its cost as an independent variable. So, the cost as an independent variable will come along with the effectiveness that actually ensures the profitability of a system. This is the part where uh, the system engineers or engineering system uh, designers are focusing on how do we have an effective system or how do we ensure that effectiveness of the system uh, which we develop. So, here there are uh, two things one is the technical effectiveness the other one is the process efficiency. Again technical effectiveness is the focus of the system engineers and operation maintenance and logistics also part of the design process while we design the system we may ensure that the operation maintenance and logistics are also taken into account because that is again a life cycle of the system that also taken into account when we design the system. And in this technical effectiveness there are two things one is the performance that is the functional performance the requirements and the priorities uh, how do we actually define the functions or design uh, the functions and the require identify the requirements and then get the priorities of the uh, customer. So, based on the priorities uh, we identify the requirements and then provide the functions in the system in order to provide the performance and the other factors are inherent availability of the system like reliability, maintainability and supportability of the system. So, while we design the system we ensure that the, the reliability and maintainability as well as the supportability is also built into the system so that actually it uh, ensures the inherent availability of the system and uh, combine this inherent availability and performance provide you the technical effectiveness and eff effectiveness and the technical effectiveness along with the process efficiency ensures the system effectiveness. So, the role of uh, system engineers are basically to ensure that the uh, system is effective and it actually adds value to the enterprises and uh, that actually leads to the profitability of the whole uh, system. So, what are the roles of system engineering in product development? So, it actually integrates the technical effort across the development project as you can see there are uh, different functional disciplines, there are different technological domains and there are specialty concerns. So, you look at the functional disciplines you can see there are uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering and all kinds of uh, all the domains uh, you need because uh, we need to integrate or we need the expertise of from different uh, disciplines and then different domains like safety, reliability, maintainability, environment and producibility. And uh, we have the specialty concerns like avionics, computers, communications, structures and processes. So, it is uh, it integrates all these technical efforts so to provide the effective uh, development of the system. The basic building blocks of the system engineering uh, as you know that uh, the maths, mathematics and physical uh, sciences that is the uh, one of the basic building block where we do the qualitative modeling, quantitative modeling, physical modeling, theory of constraint, physical laws. So, these are the based on the physical mathematical and physical sciences one of the building blocks of system engineering. But apart from that we have this management sciences where the economics, organizational design, business decision analysis and operation research are also part of the uh, building block. And this is actually unique to system engineering if not to other uh, engineering disciplines or the design aspects the management sciences are very unique to this uh, systems engineering. Similarly, you have uh, other uh, building blocks also like social sciences where we have the multidisciplinary teamwork organizational behavior and leadership because uh, systems engineering involves multiple specialties and multiple groups. Teamwork is very important and organization behavior is also very important. So, we actually uh, try to in incorporate these aspects also in the system engineering. Similarly, other uh, uh, building blocks are body of knowledge like problem definition, system boundaries, objectives, concept of operations, originating requirements. Then concurrent engineering system life cycle phases integration and qualification again this is very unique to system engineering because definition of system boundaries, objectives, hierarchy, concept of operations are all uh, very unique to systems engineering approach. Architectures like functional and logical architecture, physical and operational architecture interfaces these are again uh, building blocks of system engineering 
as well uh, trade off like concept level trade off, uh, risk management, key performance parameter trade off, these are also again building blocks for uh, systems engineering. So, you can see that uh, there are multiple uh, building blocks as I uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slide, there are mathematical and physical sciences, there are organizational behaviors, there are many trade off, there are any many uh, design principles like uh, problem definition, the uh, boundary system boundary definition then functional architecture development and trade off. So, all these are uh, very uh, essential for the system engineering and some of these are very unique to system engineering also. It cannot be seen in many other engineering fields, but in system engineering we may be using many of these as uh, very unique in the development and they are actually very crucial to the success of a, a successful system design. And some other other considerations are basically achieving a balance between the inherent conflicts so, there may be many conflicts in the engineering system design like system functionality and performance, development cost and recurring cost as I told you about the trade off. So, again it is a, a balance between the conflict, there is a conflict of cost and uh, the development cost and recurring cost. So, we need to decide which one need to have a trade off. Then the development schedule that is time to market again uh, you want to do it at, at as early as possible, but then there are uh, inherent risk involved in that one. And similarly, the development risk like probability of success of the whole system, especially the technological risk will be there, market risk will be there and similarly the business viability and success. So, these are the considerations we need to have when we design the system. So, it is not only the technology, but there are many other aspects to be considered when we go for the design of a system. And then we have the system optimization subsystems often suboptimal to achieve best balance at system level. So, since we are heavily having uh, design of subsystems, they may not be very optimal at that stage. So, we need to ensure that when these subsystems are assembled or integrated, they actually provides you a good optimization. And then ultimate systems purpose must prevail against conflicting considerations. So, whatever may be your conflicting consideration, the ultimate system performance what is intended at the initial stage should be always prevail and long term considerations uh, may drive technical decision. So, like disposal when you have a long term consideration for disposal we need to the technological decisions it actually focus on this also the long term considerations of the system. Similarly, the customer interface often act as honest broker. So, basically this is one of the uh, important part because that is the uh, area where the customer directly interacts with the system. So, that also need to be considered uh, when we design the system and then carries burden of educating customer on hard choices. So, sometimes we may have to the system designers may have to uh, educate the customer on harder choices. Sometimes customer may look for a, a another option, but we need to uh, educate them why we this particular choice is needed for the system. And then must think ahead to the next customer and next application. So, it is not only for that system or uh, that customer, we need to look at the changes uh, happening in the market or in the uh, technology and the design should always focus on the next application or the next customer and always must challenge the all the requirements. So, do not take all the requirements as granted. So, we need to challenge the requirements and then ensure that these requirements are genuine and then we have the uh, these requirements the origin of these requirements are really understood and then only we go forward go ahead with the uh, design of the system. Uh, always you need to challenge these requirements and ensure that you understand that particular requirement and the reason behind that requirement the logic of having that requirement in the system should be completely understood. We will briefly go through the uh, system engineering heritage and uh, how actually the system engineering developed as a particular uh, stream. Though the system engineering is only uh, 100 years or so old, uh, the traces of engineering systems can be seen uh, even in the in 4000 uh, BC. The water distribution system in Mesopotamia was in 4000 BC is an example for a system engineering. And similarly, the irrigation system in Egypt, the urban systems such as Athens and Greece, Roman highway systems, water transportation systems, telephone systems in 1877 and electrical power distributions in 1880. So, these are examples for the latest or the recent uh, ones, but you can see in BC itself in 4000 BC itself there were systems which actually could qualify as engineering uh, systems. The modern origins of the systems can be found in the British multidiscipline team formed in 1937 to analyze air defense system. So, probably that was one of the first organized system engineering approach in the designing of uh, some uh, complex engineering systems. 
So, it in 1937 uh, British uh, team multidisciplinary team uh, was formed to analyze air defense system. Then Bell Labs supported Nike uh, development in 1939 to 1945 and Sage Air Defense System defined and managed by MIT in 1951 to 1980. I will see a little bit about the Sage Air Defense System, what are the subsystems involved in the system at a later stage. And then as I mentioned the Atlas ICBM project uh, which was uh, managed by a systems contractor Ramo Woodridge Corporation in 19, between 1954 and 1964. After this there was a spread of uh, systems approach in various applications. The early proponents were the research and development corporation which was actually responsible for the development of uh, ICBM. And then uh, Robert McNamara, the Secretary of Defense who actually introduced these uh, systems engineering principles in uh, defense systems. Similarly, there were uh, growth in uh, engineering uh, citations also. In 1964, there were not many citations, but uh, in 1966, there was one page uh, uh, citation and then in 69, it increased to 8 pages. In 1964, there were 9 universities offering systems engineering program. But now there are again it is uh, increasing, there are a lot of people actually adapting systems engineering principles for their applications. So, the teaching of uh, system engineering was included in uh, 1971 DOD acquisition reforms, that is reforms, Department of Defense acquisition reforms. A study group chaired by uh, David Packard, uh, co-founder of HP was uh, formed to study this and then they recommended uh, formal training for Department of Defense program managers. And then Defense System Management College was established in 1971 and DSMC charged with the teaching program managers how to direct complex projects. System engineering became a core curriculum course in most of the uh, these courses. There are a lot of uh, publications existing available for engineering uh, system that uh, US Air Force Systems Engineering Handbook, then MILS standards, then you have US Army Field Manual, then Defense System Management College uh, System Engineering Management Guide and NASA's uh, Systems Engineering Handbook 1995. The discipline is actually maturing, the system engineering discipline is maturing slowly. The explosive growth in computer power is uh, changing the systems themselves and consequently systems engineering as practiced over the last half century. This was uh, commented by Rechin in July 1993 and then uh, steady growth in commercial computer tools that automate and improve execution of systems engineering process and increasing worldwide reports of system engineering applications. So, you can see an uh, increase in the worldwide reports of uh, system engineering application which actually shows that system engineering is actually maturing as a separate discipline. Expanding horizons, uh, collaboration with other technical societies are taking place. There are many standards being developed for system engineering. There is an encouraging international uh, membership for this uh, systems engineering society and then nurturing emerging system engineering applications. There are many applications coming up with commercial and environmental areas and then uh, fostering the system engineering education and research is also happening. So, these are all actually promising for the system engineering to mature as a, a separate discipline. There are many standards existing in course that is the International Council for System Engineering. So, there are current system engineering standards by Electronic Industries Association, then IEEE standards are there. Then we have the system engineering standards under development, ISO standards, ISO SPICE, then system engineering for space systems and uh, IEEE P1471. So, these are the standards being developed for systems engineering. There are many products available in the uh, market. So, if you are interested to know more about this uh, system engineering and the, what are the developments taking place, you can actually refer to some of these proceedings or journals or the organization website www.incos.org. Other technical committee papers, member books and textbooks and regional conferences are available. You can actually refer to these uh, proceedings to know more about the system engineering. Why is it uh, relevant to India or why do we need to have to learn the systems engineering? Because a lot of indigenous development of defense systems are taking place in India and these developments really need to follow the system engineering approach because they are very complex engineering system that actually requires multiple uh, disciplines and there are actually multiple uh, teams working on it. So, unless we have a systems engineering approach to these projects, it is very difficult for success of the project and therefore, we need to embrace the system engineering in a big way to for the success of these projects. Similarly, there are large infrastructure projects coming up in India, especially in the construction uh, sector, uh, highways and expressways 
and there are a lot of other construction activities. We have uh, multiple uh, uh, infrastructure projects in terms of power plants and other uh, areas. So, these are all very complex engineering systems and therefore, we need to follow the systems approach in order to ensure that actually it delivers on time as well as it meets the customer requirement or the stakeholders requirement. Apart from these, there are many other social projects also coming up like the healthcare projects, education projects, then we have this uh, unique identification project. So, these are all projects with lot of complexity, some of them are having the engineering complexity, some of them may be having some other complexities, but most of them have multidisciplinary teams working in order to provide the desired output. So, for the success of these projects, we need to ensure that uh, we follow the principles of uh, engineering system design and implement these principles to ensure that it uh, projects are successful and meets the requirement. So, to conclude this lecture, we discussed about the, the basics of uh, systems engineering, the importance of system engineering and why do we need to have system engineering as a, a separate discipline and uh, what are the uh, benefits of this uh, uh, using the principles of engineering system in complex system design. And then we discussed about the, some of those uh, success and failures of the systems and uh, how do we actually learn from these failures to uh, ensure that uh, we, when we have a systematic approach in the design of uh, systems, we can ensure that uh, the failures are minimized and uh, always there will be a, a success in the system design. And uh, we uh, mentioned about some of the developments uh, took place in system engineering and some of the uh, projects uh, undergoing as well as some of the standards existing. In the next uh, lecture, we will look at uh, the classification of various systems, then the role of system engineers and how does the system engineers uh, play a vital role in the design of systems. And then further to that, we will look at the requirement analysis and then the six functions of design process. So, till we meet in the next lecture, very goodbye to all of you. Thank you.